idiot. Do not try this at home. Welcome back to the channel! Um, hey, that's all six of you here because that's all the views I'm gonna get. Recently, Shadowversity, Shadowversity released a video talking about shooting arrows into trees and climbing and zip lining with it. He said he shad, S-H-A-D, on that myth or that trope. Now, I'm not gonna be biased, but I think something went wrong with his process. And I think I can do it better. And if not, that I'm wasting your time and it's just a repeat video. But that's nothing new with my channel. So today we have, this is my Barnet Recruit. It's a 130 pound crossbow. So it's a 400 grain bolt at 330 feet per second. It's only 130 pounds, but since it has a um, 12 and a half inch power stroke, so we're getting a lot more joules. It's about 90 joules of energy. For a medieval crossbow is about uh, the most example I've seen have been literally six to eight inches. And I'll be shooting this mad concoction. I'm gonna be shooting into a tree. Now, some of you might say shooting into trees, especially in Northern Ohio, where there can be tree infections is irresponsible. Some of you say you shouldn't be shooting into trees. First up is how I harness this arrow. I'm gonna shoot this in. This is a field tip. Tipped it on the top, looped it around and this did a weird limmy loomy lot. I have no clue. I'm microscopically worried that if I shoot this up in a tree and I'm pulling, it's gonna shoot back. When I'm shot into a uh, hardwood, like treated wood, it goes in about, and I'm not joking, three inches. What rope am I using? I got real elvish paracord. Uh, I've already tangled it up. And this is one of the problems that uh, Shad faced. He had it just sitting in a pile like this. I think if we put it in a figure eight pattern on the ground, it'll pick out much easier and not give as much drag. The Shad had it just bunched up, and this way, when you have it a figure eight pattern, um, these cross overlay, and so when you pick it up, there's no room for tangling. At least supposedly, that's what I was taught. And that's what everyone in the comment section kept talking about. I'm gonna remove some of those things. So I don't want something getting caught and snagged. And we're just shooting up there. Whoa, I just tripped on a wire. What is that? It's a vine. Who put a vine in the middle of the wood? Can you please all just appreciate that this is the tripod I'm, work I'm well, trying to work with? So I'm going to try to tie these two strings together. Basically, I'm trying this onto this. Ah. But the problem is, with this doodad on there, it doesn't quite add 20 inch bolts, but they don't quite clear the crossbow. So this is going to shoot seriously high. This is my explorer crossbow. I'm going to squint for safety. My string didn't snap. Um, well, exactly what happened to Shad happened to me. The arrow literally just went thunk and stopped dead. So this went here and went from there to there, and that's it. Well, maybe, maybe it's because it was an angle. See, this is flat, and that's the so going whoosh, and it's pulling it instead of pulling it. It's basically pulling it parallel to the plane of the cord. So what if it was pulling it like perpendicular? All right, so we have moved up the hill. Now the difference is we made the bait figure eight a little bigger, um, and there is still rubble here. So if that catches again, this is like some brush that might get tangled up. If it catches again, I might try something else, but we're also much closer. We're gonna shoot from this angle as opposed to that way. I am actually not 100% confident as I was when I started this video. I know there's gonna be some of you who are saying, well, why don't you like put some sort of like non-binding agent, like something like, like a, a greased rope or something slippery or something with low friction. Well, I mean, that would work, but we're trying to make something that we can climb with. So that would kind of defeat the purpose. If you have any better ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments, but you know, all six of the people who watch this video. We are going to point blank this and see what happens. Here goes nothing, good for safety. So I might have squinted for safety too hard. I think I missed. So, good news. It made it past the tree. Bad news. It did the tangle tangle again. So 100% it's stuff, it's uh, detrius spread getting caught up in the cable. So I think I'm gonna makeshift this. I'm gonna remove that tip because that is horrifyingly on eye level. 
I'm gonna tie one end to the tree. It's just a very light knot. It's just meant to keep it maybe some light tension on the rope and maybe that'll help pull out some of the kinks. All right, this is the monstrosity I have come up with. So there's a little tangulation, but I, I, I did as, as much as I could to make it each one's concentric. Not only is it there, I notice it's larger in the back than it is the front. So one will never be uh, in front, could possibly fold in front of another. I think this is our best chance of actually having enough kinetic force to stick in that tree. I turned my back and it just shot off like a spring. Firing. <coughs> All right, um, I'm sorry to lose faith that this is actually a thing. Here's my thought pattern. If you shoot a bullet underwater, it'll go what? Max like six feet, seven feet. The max, the max I've ever seen one was like 12 feet. This doesn't have much difference than the resistance of water. I'm not supposed to start 20 feet. So I came in here really cocky thinking that the rope was not gonna do it, but I, I, I kept thinking that I could figure this out, but I'm not sure I can. Let's do one more experiment. Okay, we can just top the rope sitting on the ground and shoot it and just see what the tensile strength is. Because a big thing that people also are suspicious of is, could that actually hold your weight? All right, and we'll point blank. If this doesn't work, absolutely nothing does. Sounded like it hit something. Maybe I should just pistol it. Yeah, this works. Did that bounce off? That's what's going on. That's what's going on. So the longbow, come on, I'll show you. So the longbow Shad used, I don't remember where he was pull, attaching it to, but he was attaching it like down the center. I'm an idiot. So when I'm attaching it to the front, it's pulling on the front. Uh, so the center of drag traditionally with the fletchings is about like right here. But when I put the uh, string on the front, now the drag, the aerodynamic drag is the same. Now we have mechanical drag coming on the front. So it's probably way over here even. Because of that, I think I have a plan. I present to you Aero uh, Launcher 2.0. I'm actually embarrassed how stupid I was. I'm smarter than that. Apparently not. So yeah, now the center of drag is gonna be on the very back. And then once it sticks in the tree, you just pull this rope and uh, that flimsy duct tape, well, flimsy compared to carbon fiber, is gonna snap right off, and that way you are having your weight bearing on the strong of the air rather than the tip, which of course wouldn't work. Let's try it. I'm gonna risk it all, and I'm gonna try this one one more time. Thanks for stopping by. This is a knitting channel now. So, I have a theory that the reason all of this was happening since the dawn of the whole video, hurry the arrow was rotating. I think I might have actually even hit it from here, but it would just bounce off because I kept hearing these clacking sounds and then my own fletching broke. So this is the farthest back I can get it. Otherwise it won't be able to seat into the action of the crossbow. Watch, load it in and then slide it back into the action. And that is an issue with this crossbow system. Not the system itself, but the setup trying to do to launch arrows. I saw it curve through midair. Well, okay, so you cannot accurately shoot it because it destroys all accuracy with the thing. I think we've proven that. It didn't even snap on the back. It's just we can't anchor it at the very back. And if we do this, it will veer. But if you could, could the could it have enough power to actually hold your weight? <sighs> there, we hit. What a shot. Okay, so like my tiny rope uh, that was there, the rope did not snap. That was the secondary knot. And I just did that for shipping purposes so I can ship the rope without the air tied on when I was working on this last night. So I'm not counting that as a failure. This was just a, a crap double knot. You saw me do my terrible knot. So I'm gonna climb up there, tie that on, then we're gonna see if it's gonna hold weight. As you can see, it's really not that high. So what's gonna happen is the first thing a duct tape is gonna break, it doesn't break. I had too much duct tape. I'm gonna snap it like this in case the air plays out. It's not gonna. Yikes. 
So it's almost like if the arrow has enough force to hold your weight, then it's gonna and it's gonna break the carbon fiber. The carbon fiber is the strongest thing I can think of. All right, J hook. Can you J hook with 550 cord? Let's find out. I'm scared. Whoa! It holds. What? Okay. This is definitely holding. Now I'm afraid it's going to be high because I'm afraid to look up. Somebody's afraid it's going to pull out and the tip's going to hit me. Let me jump a little. Yeah, okay. I'm going to zoom out so you see my feet are actually off the ground. Alright. Oh! Well, the tip didn't fly out, but this is why you don't do dumb crap in the woods by yourself. Yow, that hurt. So, let's see if I can get up there. Um, oh, here we go. So see this right here? That is the, uh, the tip of the arrow, of the ball. I thought carbon fiber was gonna have the best chance, but it seems like if carbon fiber hits hard enough to seat deep enough to hold your weight, it tends to shatter the shaft. I mean, not surprising. When I first pulled on that, it started to give. So it had shattered on impact. So final consensus, can you use a modern crossbow to shoot a zip line and carry it? Um, so I don't wanna say no. There are so many variables. There is so much that could be done different. Like what if I use like aluminum arrows? What if I use wood, our traditional crossbow? However, one thing I have learned, and I think this is definitive proof, it is easier to shoot a zip line with a longbow than it is a crossbow, especially a compound modern crossbow because of all the mechanics and inner workings. Uh, I highly, once again, repeat, do not repeat what I'm doing. I did get a little, a couple, you know, boo-boos today. And if that bolt had come loose and the tip had come down, that could have had a very bad day. Anyway, so I do not think this is possible to do with a modern compound bow. I, I, I thought it was gonna be so funny. I thought it was gonna come here and be like all like, yo Shed, this is why our country has a flag on the moon and you lost to emus. But yeah, I think you're right Shed. This does not work. And I think I did it pretty objectively scientifically and it just didn't work. And I guess we'll try this again with a real bow. Maybe there's some things I could change about that. But until that time, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching and bye.